Hello, good evening. It was the day that changed the world. Nearly 3,000 people died on September the 11th, 2001. The attacks may have been on American soil, but this weekend's 10th anniversary will be marked all over the world. In a moment, we'll be hearing the thoughts of British personnel at Camp Bastion, many of whom watched 9-11 unfold while still at school. But first, Will Inglis reports on some key figures who have cause to remember the day more than most. The events of 9-11 shocked the world. The single bloodiest terror attack in history sparked emotions ranging from shock through grief, anger and ultimately revenge. And ten years on, the British forces are still fighting alongside US, NATO and other allies in Afghanistan. Colonel Marilyn Wills was in the Pentagon when American Airlines Flight 77 went in. The gentleman sitting in my chair was killed. There were two people in the meeting that I was in were killed. My senior officer, General Maud, at the time was killed. I Sergeant Major and many others that were killed just right there in our office. Because our office was right there that everybody see the impact on that second floor. But there were a lot of us who survived. And I'm here today. I'm here today, I'm in Afghanistan. I'm resilient, as all service members are. I bounced back. 10 years is a long time, but for me, it's just like yesterday. The attacks were a test for the NATO alliance, floundering for a purpose after the end of the Cold War. I'm a politician, and uh, NATO is a political as well as a military headquarters, and therefore your mind starts to whirl, first of all, with the shock, uh, secondly, with sympathy, and thirdly, with what we were going to do about it. And uh, the ambassadors met uh, uh, just after the event, uh, expressing sympathy to the Americans, but also expecting an initiative to come. Its members invoked Article 5, stating that an attack on one is an attack on all, originally drafted for a military crisis on the East German border. That decision ultimately led to the formation of the international force still engaged in Afghanistan. Our operation uh, in Afghanistan um, uh, is our most important uh, military operation. So obviously 9-11 uh, uh, has had a very direct impact uh, on uh, the work uh, in uh, NATO. The Taliban were rapidly removed from power, bringing sudden liberties like the freedom for girls to attend school. But the Talibs soon formed an insurgency against what was then a small international force and haven't stopped fighting since. Ten years on from 9-11 and with its mastermind shot dead by US special forces, the international coalition has made it harder for Afghanistan to be used as a base for attacks. Nonetheless, New York City is again on alert, with reports of terrorists plotting to mark the anniversary. Will Inglis, Forces News. Well, as we heard, 10 years on and NATO troops are still in Afghanistan on an operation triggered by what happened on 9-11. We've been gathering the thoughts and memories of British personnel at Camp Bastion. Obviously, I know why we're here and it's all the war on terror and stuff, but uh, at the time, obviously not realising how big it was, um, I didn't really see myself being out here. Um, obviously, that it all started 10 years ago and I was just a child and we're still here and now I'm an adult and made my own decision to volunteer to come out here and uh, it's, it's quite amazing that we are actually still here. First year of secondary school, I'd just come home, um, turned on the TV and seen all over um, the Twin Towers coming down. Um, horrific sight for anybody, um, but it, it didn't really hit me to what it meant or, or how it occurred uh, at that age. I was only 12 years old. When I first joined up, I didn't realise it was, I didn't really know the connection and everything, what was going on. I knew it was something to do with terrorism and everything, but I know Af Afghanistan was all about that, but obviously they training for it and everything, coming out here, you get to know a little bit more about it and it makes sense. Well, 9-11 was the most significant terrorist act to happen, probably in all of our memories. Lost nearly 3,000 people in the attack and nearly 70 Britons were killed in that attack, the single largest loss of British life in any terrorist attack. And here we are, 10 years on, in Afghanistan, and the reasons why we came to Afghanistan are still the reasons why we're here, to prevent international terrorism using 
an ungoverned Afghanistan to launch attacks against us or our allies or anywhere else in the world. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Tim Purbrick there. Well, it's a question everyone asks, especially with the 10th anniversary looming. Where were you on 9-11? Well, the commander of NATO troops in Afghanistan, General John Allen, has his own story. Well, I was the deputy commander, uh, uh, deputy commandant at the United States Naval Academy. Uh, so we were 30 miles from Washington uh, when uh, the attack occurred in New York and on the Pentagon, ultimately, and in the field at Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Um, at first we thought it was uh, a terrible navigational error and then very quickly we realized the United States was under attack. Uh, it was something that was new obviously to me. I'd been in the service well over 30 years at that point uh, and at that point we uh, realized that our future was going to be dramatically different than all that we had in experienced in the previous years of the Cold War. Uh, it was going to be uh, an era uh, of long-term conflict. It was going to be an era probably where we would have a long-term commitment to both counterterrorism, uh, but also seeking at a genuine and a national level to try to uh, overcome the root causes that would create such a vehemence, such a malignant terrorist uh, capability around the world. So things were going to be different. We knew they were going to be different. We knew this was going to be a long struggle, uh, and it has manifested itself in a number of places around the world, uh, and in Afghanistan, uh, it had a uniqueness to it where the U.S. and coalition forces ultimately and swiftly responded to that attack, uh, ultimately threw off uh, the Taliban darkness, if you will, that had descended on this country and permitted it to become a safe haven for the Taliban and Al-Qaeda and other terrorist organizations. And since that time, uh, the great efforts, truly great efforts and sacrifice of the international community uh, to make a difference here, to, to give this government uh, stability and security uh, so that the people of Afghanistan will never again be under the heel of the Taliban boot, but also to give them a future, a legitimate future, and to remove the possibility that Afghanistan will ever again be a terrorist safe haven, especially a place where Al-Qaeda can find that it could plot uh, attacks upon the West or, or upon the, the poor Afghan civilians. General John Allen sharing his memories there. Well, this afternoon at the American Air Base at RAF Flake and Heath in Suffolk, they're holding a memorial service for the victims of 9-11. Our reporter Kyle Lark is there. Well, a special 9-11 remembrance ceremony has been held here at RAF Lake and Heath. There are currently around 4,500 personnel and their dependents on the base. Many of them stopped their day to join the ceremony. Well, I'm joined by two of them now. Now, Kristen, you were on duty on 9-11. What do you remember about that day? Well, September 11, 2001, I was actually stationed at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. At that time, I was a security forces person. Um, the morning of 9-11, it was my birthday. Um, I was a new mom, so um, we were just sitting there deciding what we were going to have for breakfast, etc. And then um, we saw the first plane hit the tower. Of course, everyone else thought, you know, possibly operator error, pilot mistake. Um, then the second plane hit the tower. At that time, we... Um, got the phone call to come into work so I called my mom to pick up my son and then we went to duty we reported in and did what we were trained to do really changed changed what was happening that day for you and, and Trevor you were at school at the time you were just 13 and United Flight 93 came over your school what do you remember about that day oh uh, that's correct we'd actually uh, sat down in class and uh, I remember the teacher turned on the TV and we saw the second plane hit the tower uh, shortly after we were instructed to evacuate the school uh, where we were picked up by our parents and then uh, later had found out that United 93 had actually flown over the school, which is why we were evacuated. And why is it important for you to have this ceremony to remember this weekend? Um, I think as Americans, uh, we lost 3,000 brothers and sisters that day and it's, it's very important that we uh, celebrate and memorialize those people lost on that day. And for you, Kristen, how difficult is it for you being away from home on, on an anniversary such as this? Um, I don't think it's difficult at all. Being here, being with my brothers and my sisters and my, my friends that become family when you're stationed overseas, it's an important day to remember what happened that day and also remember how far we've came. Well, thank you very much. Well, over the weekend there will be a 24-hour run taking place on the base which will conclude at the very moment of 10 years on from when the first plane hit the very first tower. Kyle Lark for Forces News at RF Lake and Heath.